Today on an all new Dr. Phil. My husband spanks me with a paddle. Say yes, sir. Is he delusional? We had a dog. He kept in the house for five days dead. He felt like he could bring that dog back to life. Just like Jesus you, did with Lazarus. Why is his wife? You videotaped him giving a red belly to your son. <laughs> Allowing this to happen. Why did you let him do that instead of stopping it? Well, yesterday I talked to a husband who made headlines when he spanked his wife with a wooden spoon. He would also slap his sons until they had what he called a red belly. But Kirby says he's no bully. He's the victim. If you missed that conversation then you need to see this. The Lancaster County man will go to jail for up to two years for beating his wife when she didn't call him sir. I'm going to go get the spanking spoon right now if you don't say yes, sir. I do believe everyone deserves a spanking sometimes. I spanked my wife, Renee, with a wooden paddle. I did have to maneuver her a little bit to get a decent swing because I didn't want to ricochet off of something and hit her in the back. So I swatted her. And I believe I only got two spankings that time. You're not sorry that you spanked her, correct? That's one. How can I be sorry for someone who purposely provoked me to spank her? There is no place to run. There is no place to hide to justify what you did here. What you didn't see is someone provoking me, cursing at me. Now, if I had that on video, I bet you all would have a different story. If I saw her yelling at you, screaming at you, then would I understand what you're doing? And the answer is absolutely, unequivocally no. During our fights, Renee spit at me and hit me. In the middle of the fight, she put a look on me that I've seen in other people that I suspected had a demon. She kind of dropped her head and went and spits coming out of her mouth. I mean, it was chilling. So you're telling me that's normal, that someone not no, she was doing pissed. anything to be exerted, to, to drop their head, look up, you go, that's normal? What you just did is a fraction of how you looked when you were standing there telling her to say, yes, sir. I'm gonna spank you again if you don't say yes, sir. Did I want to spank her? In a normal relationship, would she ever have gotten spanked? No, in a normal relationship, she would not have gotten spanked, no. What's it gonna take to get you to be quiet? <laughs> a red belly. <laughs> That's called a red belly. When you take a child that trusts you and loves you and you pin him down and humiliate him and hit him like that, you are a coward and a bully and you should be ashamed of that. What I did, I will stand for. But fix me, don't give me innuendo. Don't give me, well, you're a bad guy. Give me the answer. Tell me I'm wrong, tell me what to do. You're wrong! Well, Kirby really wanted to be back here today, but he couldn't due to a protection order preventing him from having any contact with his wife, Renee. So during the show yesterday, Renee was sequestered backstage. So she's not heard anything of my conversation with him. But today, it's her turn. Renee says that she's watched our shows that dealt with domestic violence, but never felt that she could relate. She says the abuse she suffered felt more like domestic discipline, and it took her 24 years to realize there wasn't any difference. I was totally embarrassed to admit that my husband was using spanking as a form of punishment. It took me 24 years to figure out that I was in an abusive relationship. The first time that Kirby hit me, actually with a wooden paddle, was in 2010. He used to keep the paddle in the bedroom on the top of the bookshelf. And I believe this is the one that he used. We were having an argument in the kitchen and I remember leaning over him and I was yelling in his face. I had had it and I was talking so fast that spittle was coming out of my mouth and it was hitting him. And he said, you're spitting on me and I wouldn't stop, I just kept yelling. And the next thing I know, he's grabbing me, he's taking me into the bedroom, he spanks me with the paddle. He would just wind up and go. 
And then the worst thing was he said, next time you do that, I'm going to pull down your pants in front of the kids and spank you. I started videotaping Kirby in May of 2012. Kirby mocked me for taking the videos. My wife thinks it's so cute to video me whenever we're in a discussion. He didn't have any fear or concern that I had these videos at all in my possession. It was four weeks until I was able to take that video to the police when I had given up all other efforts to help my husband. The state had actually offered Kirby a plea bargain and they were gonna drop all the criminal charges. When I heard that Kirby had not taken the plea bargain and that we were heading to trial, I was convinced at that moment Kirby thought he was right and he had done nothing wrong. Where are you in all of this right now? What, where's your heart? Where are you in your relationship with him and the future? We have five children together, and the oldest is 22, the youngest is seven. So there's a good 11 years of interacting with co-parenting that I have to deal with. Right now I'm protected through the PFA, which is a restraining order, for another two years. And then I'm officially unprotected from him just showing up at the door, stuff like that. And are, what are you fearful would happen if he showed up at the door? I mean, if just, and you open it and there he stands, what, what do you think, how far can he go? What, what do you think could happen? Well, who knows? How do you know when somebody has a limit? I could say, oh, my husband would never do that, but how, how do I know where the limit is? We had a dog. He ended up killing that dog. And um, it was because of over-disciplining that dog. And so as I think about that, and I think about maybe there was a point right there is when he changed, because he kept that dog in the house for five days dead and prayed that he would be able to bring it back to life. How did he kill the dog? Okay, well, he was a dog trainer. They would take the leash and the choker chain and they would either short time so they couldn't move or they would take that and they would literally take them over a bar and they would hold them till their feet were off the ground, they were choking, and then let them go at the final moment so they knew that they were boss and not the dog. So the dog... I mean, By the way, that is not acceptable dog training. No, For anybody that that's not. out there, trust me, that is not acceptable. No. Did he choke this dog to death? He short-tied it in a stationary tub. The doorbell rang. The dog jumped out. I go st st downstairs and there's my dog dead. So and when you say that he kept this dog, was he like praying over the dog? Mm -hmm. Was he mm -hmm. actually, in your opinion of the belief, that he could resurrect this dog and bring this yes, dog back? Yes, just like Jesus okay. did with Lazarus. All right, well, because that's important to me, okay? That's delusional and that's significant in terms of what you can predict or not predict. When we come back, I, I want to ask if there were red flags missed here. You know, when was the first time Kirby spanked Renee, and what did she say to herself about it in that moment? We'll be right back. But he said things to me like I wasn't the prettiest woman he ever dated. He always pictured himself married to a tall blonde. He wanted to have more than one wife. He wished he could see every woman's boobs in the whole world. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, visits to the ER. I was covered from head to toe with bruises. Oh, he's choking me. I couldn't breathe. Calls to police. You blame me that I made you file for divorce. Did I hold a gun to your head? I'm not saying you made me. For once, own up. You get angry really easy. This isn't a marriage. Are you an abusive husband? Yes. It's a train wreck. You're going to shut this down, or I'm going to shut it down for you. All-new Dr. Phil. That's tomorrow. Kirby's always told me that his family doesn't like me. I told Kirby's mom about the bruises on my body from Kirby hitting me. And she said to me, well, you don't have any marks, do you? And I said, yeah, I did. I said, I have pictures of it and the police have it. And she goes, oh, you have little marks on your little hiney. I'm pretty sure my mouth just dropped open. I cannot imagine why any woman would think it's okay for another woman to get hit. I don't care if it's your son or not. I realized that some people just care about preserving the family and don't care about the truth. Well, that was Renee who says Kirby's parents have never been supportive of their marriage. And um, 
let me ask you, did this ever happen before you got married? Never. And when was the first time? The first time was very soon after we were married. Uh -huh. And to be fair, so women understand, there's a lot of women that are watching this that are maybe seeing bits and pieces of something that looks familiar. To be fair, I took the first hit in our relationship. And so I went after him. I don't know what he said. Maybe he said, I don't know if you heard of any, I don't know what was shown yesterday. Mm -hmm. But he said things to me like I wasn't the prettiest woman he ever dated. He always pictured himself married to a tall blonde. He wanted to have more than one wife. He wished he could see every woman's boobs in the whole world, okay? I, I'm not justifying my actions. But what I'm saying is I threw the first hit. I'm 5'6", he's 6'5". I don't even know if I made contact. That's when he took me, threw me on the bed, spanked me with his open hand, and in my mind, that was kind of a no, no harm, no foul, like we were both idiots. And so kind of, I kind of forgot that one. Then the second time happened in the car, and that's where I had that moment. I just quit my job at a big corporation where I was able to pr provide for myself. I sat in the back of that van. I wouldn't sit in the front seat. I sat in the back, and I thought, I can't go back. My pride. It was my pride that kept me in that relationship instead of telling my mom, calling one of my bridesmaids, telling them I was in this relationship that was bad, but I stayed. Joining us in the audience is a family friend to Renee and Kirby. Uh, Trina was actually a bridesmaid in their wedding 26 years ago, and she says she's seen a change in Kirby over the years. So maybe, I mean, it's not that he was the same the day they married, but that there's been a change since then. Uh, what has changed, Trina? Oh, everything. So what we saw yesterday in my conversation with him when, when we were talking is not the Kirby that you met originally. Not it's originally. It's not the Kirby she married. No, not originally. But I do remember the dog's story. She told us that Biff died, and, we, and she told us that he was left dead to be raised for the dead. And that was the first time, and our oldest child was five years old, that as a group of bridesmaids, we were like, oh my gosh, he's sick, like what's wrong with him? We had no idea that Kirby was not thinking clearly, but that was our red flag as a peer group. But we didn't live in the same town as her, so we had no idea what was yeah, going on. But that's on. pretty far into it by now. This wasn't oh, yeah, like, their first child was five like years you could old. do something before you did it. I have a question for Renee uh, regarding something I noticed on the tape, something that almost disturbed me as much as the spanking. We'll be right back. You videotaped him giving a red belly to your son, who was how old at the time? 14. Why did you videotape it instead of stopping it? On the new season of Dr. Phil, families falling apart. I consider Josh a pedophile. He was banned from prom. He was the age of the teachers. I had Joshua take me to get birth control because I heard that it prevents cancer. So you're taking it for cancer prevention. Check my forehead. Did somebody write stupid on there? Videos going viral. I just did the fire challenge. My face is peeling. Are you kidding me? What my daughter did, it's kind of hard to say I regret it. When you hit her with the shovel, she could have been killed. Get ready. Come on, help me out here. You're supposed to help me out. For Dr. Phil's most anticipated season yet. Just recently, I've come to find out that Kirby hit the boys a lot. Some of the boys say they were spanked on a daily basis and sometimes multiple times a day. My concern, and I'm curious, about the kids' involvement in all of this. Uh, when I first watched the full-length uh, home video of Kirby spanking Renee, something disturbed me. I noticed when Kirby left the room to get the paddle, two of Renee's sons were in the room, and one son actually asked if she wanted him to hold her phone to video it. Take a look at this. Just hold it. Tell me what just happened there exactly. Um, Kirby was going to get the paddle, and as he left the room, I, I didn't know what I was going to do with the phone, so I, I might have mouth story. I let that child know, can you hold this for me? And then he asked, should I hold it? And then I was like, no, that's my child. And I took it back, and I set it on the counter. 
Do your children get that his behavior here is not okay? They do. They do, but they have, they're conflicted on their own. You videotaped him giving a red belly to your son who was how old at the time? 14. Um, he's holding him down, he's giving him that, and you videotaped it. Why did you videotape it instead of stopping it? It really was the best thing to do because I had that on video. If I would have gone after him, it could have gotten worse for him and for myself. You probably created a longer term safety window for these children by videotaping it than by tackling him at the time. I don't advocate getting physical in those situations at, at any point. Had he been choking him or doing something that threatened his life, totally I, would, different. I would tell you a different story. Totally different. I, you, you, you have to ha have a different approach to it. But now, we have excerpts of a letter from your 22-year-old uh, that I want to share. Uh, he says, these are just excerpts. I saw a lot of fighting, a lot of bickering. Knowing how my mom gets, and she can get in your face, and she's very intelligent, so she knows how to spin things and make you feel dumb. And my dad felt like he was losing control, and that's the only way he knew, so he spanked her. I just heard a couple of weeks ago, he said to someone, it was just two wax on our butt. I don't know what the big deal is. And that just really took me back. I haven't talked to my dad in a month. I just know that he's stuck in a spot where he doesn't know what to do. And he's not crazy. He's not out to hurt my mom. He's not a bad guy. He's just confused. So your 22-year-old son has some compassion for him, although he says, I was shocked to hear it was just a couple of wax. He knows better than that. And he admits that he's misguided. I mean, does your son understand why you're not still in this relationship? They understand that basic premise. They understand it was against the law and that he should have never resorted to physical violence. The part they're confused with, which is very understandable, is that they saw their mother in their dad's face mad. The kids are confused because their role as they see a mother in a household was to be subservient to a father. So when I'm speaking up and, and saying things to my husband, they're going, that's wrong. Kirby's mom, Dolores, says her son is not the monster Renee portrays him to be. He took a lot from Renee, he really did. Closed captioning provided by... Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues, from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity. And you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. Joining us in the audience is a woman who says Kirby is misinterpreting the Bible. Um, Rachel, you've been listening to all of this. Uh, what's your take on this? Proverbs 31, it's a woman speaking. It's not a man. So a lot of people don't think about that. It's actually not a husband demanding what has to happen or else for his wife. It's actually a mother talking to her son who is going to be king um, about just the qualities in a woman that could be valuable and inspirational and beautiful. And 
the things to look for. And it's actually not intended or there to make women feel trapped by the title of a Proverbs woman. It's not supposed to be pressure, but to empower and inspire the value that we have. Well, your neighbor here is uh, a Christian minister, Devon Franklin. Uh, Devon, I've been watching you while we were having this conversation. <laughs> I thought you or I or both of us were going to have a heart attack um, <laughs> yes, at exactly. the misuse of Scripture uh, to justify irrational behavior. What, what, what's, your, what's your take? I mean, it's, it's so sad, you know, to see a, a Christian man um, present himself in this way and present the Word of God in this way and to use Scripture to twist his irrational behavior. And Renee, my prayers go out to you uh, because it's very, very difficult. But I really pray that Kirby will see the light and no longer use Scripture in that way. Actually, Kirby's mom, Dolores, uh, says her son is not the monster Renee portrays him to be, and she's actually on the phone. Dolores, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you for being here. You've been listening to this all along, right? Yes, I have. So tell me what you honestly think about your son's position and thinking about all of this that we discussed today? Well, he's my son, and I love him, but there are some things that, that I didn't agree with. Begging his wife is just not right. It's not right. But at the same time, he took a lot from Renee. He really did. Kirby's trying to do right. He loves her. He keeps saying he loves her. I understand you love your son and and you support him and, and stand by him. And I've always said we don't have to love everything somebody does in order to love them. And right. I would expect you to be in your son's corner, and I'm glad that he has you, but I really hope that you'll love him enough to tell him the truth about the things that you think he's not straight on. Right. I appreciate you calling in and, and listening to everything, so thank you very much for that. And Renee, let me just conclude this by saying to you, I believe that uh, Kirby is um, really not thinking straight. I, I know he is confused. He is going to need some serious, serious help, and I'm going to offer to arrange him some hand-picked serious help, and I'm going to start with a Christian counselor that can let him know straight up where he is misguided and at least try to get him dealing with the truth. Thank you. And get that done. Okay. There is another video between husband and wife that had all of my viewers talking. And by the time the husband finally arrived on this stage, he called me a farce. You are a farce. This is a farce. Well, what happened to them? We'll find out next. This is going to get me mad. I'm not going to punch anybody. Like Shut up. Yeah. You want your... Go, go away. Go ahead, you whore. Go ahead. Punch me. You just attacked me. Ow! Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. Confession. So I said you've thrown her to the ground, choked her. I just lose control. Of an abusive husband. You need to stay away from her or you're going back to prison. That's tomorrow. Closed captioning provided by... Well, many of you will remember my next guest. The fights between her and her husband were shocking and unforgettable. Now, Marie says Ron scared her to death and that he wrote the word kill on their bathroom mirror. Now, Ron completely denied her allegations and claimed she was the abusive one in their relationship. But when Ron got to my stage, uh, he didn't want to hear what Marie or anyone else had to say, especially me. Here's your food card! You want me to talk like that when you say, give me your food card? Anything will set Ron off. No! He punches things. His hands bleed. You want your 
There is definitely something wrong with these rages. Forget it! Are you afraid? Yeah, terrified. What do you think is going to happen? I'm going to be another missing wife. You think he can kill you? Absolutely. This is going to get me mad. You just attacked me! Get out of here! Ah! No! I'm never physical, Dr. Phil, ever. Never once touched her, never called her anything fat, ugly. She's beautiful. Everything she says is a lie. Get away from me. I just woke up. I don't want to wake up four hours and f with you. I'm an abused husband. Do you know what that means, Dr. Phil? I get my face bashed in every day. I'm dealing with a lunatic. <laughs> you people are laughing. My home is a mess. Time out, time out. You know, Listen. You can ridicule oh, me for being. Come on, you can be a victim later. I don't think domestic violence is a platform for laughter. Because if some of your women are. Hey, hey, domestic... hey, you've got a know it all, sanctimonious attitude. How's that working it's for not. you in your marriage? Then why don't but you do something different? Zone. You're right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Crawl down off your high horse, buddy. What a farce. Are you going to keep calling the police and being angry? And are you going to punch you go... punching my Run! face? You shot. don't! No, no! I rub your feet. I beg you. You rub my Please, don't pregnant. discount me. You already beat me all the time. Don't discredit me. I don't beat you. In all the time that I've been working with people, you two may have perhaps the worst communication skills I've ever met. You can't problem solve because you're not problem solvers. You're problem creators. And both of you need to calm down. Well, Marie, you're here. He's not. No. Where is he? At his home. Okay, which means you two are not together. No. I packed my bags and I went to a shelter right. with my daughter. I took Della okay. with me. Right. And how did that work for you? How did it? How did that flow? And how did it work for you when you decided to do that? I knew I was worth more than that to somebody on this earth. You couldn't bring me down. I'm not a victim. I don't want to be looked at as a victim. We arranged for you guys to have help when you left here. Yes. Uh, a therapist for yes. you to see. Did you do that? I did. And did he go? He did go a few times and uh -huh. decided that um, we could get help someplace else because he decided he didn't really like the therapist. He didn't like that guy either. No. Uh, um, I notice you're not wearing your wedding ring. No. Are you finished? Yes. You're moving on. I'm moving on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, at the time, I felt like you were self-medicating with alcohol. Where are you on that front? At, at, at I'm not drinking at all. Just anymore. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. No. <laughs> um, at the time. I was concerned about your alcohol consumption. Did you drink last night or no? Did you throw those away? I did dump them. They're outside. Okay, because there was three I dumped them. I dumped here. them. It's not a question if we're going to get divorced. It's a question if Dr. Phil says you're safe enough to continue to be your mother with your daughter. Trust me. You take a combination of Celexa and Clonopin, and then you drink whiskey. Listen. Uh, I'm worried about this mix of pills and alcohol. You were taking uh, medication as well. Yes. And I had one of our doctor on demand doctors plug in and weigh in. What impact did that have on you? That had a huge impact on me. I couldn't believe that that could happen. And when I looked at the show, when I watched it, um, I was like, my gosh. I want to live. I want to live for my daughter. So you've stopped Again. drinking. So you're not mixing alcohol and medicine. Nope. You've also lost like 20 pounds, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah. All right. We're going to take a quick break. More from Marie. And later we'll hear from another memorable guest who says, I won't be able to recognize her now. That's all coming up. When I look in the mirror, I feel like a whale. Tony makes little comments. She'll say, oh, I've only had 1,200 calories today. I'm like, did you count the entire meal? If I told you that you could change your lifestyle, would you be interested in that? 150% yes. We can't do 
this show without you, our studio audience. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. I first met Marie last season after she wrote in about her husband, Ron, who she claimed was abusive. Now, he vehemently denied any abuse and said his wife was the problem. Now, since the show, Marie has left him and says her life is drama-free uh, at this point. Now, you left, went to a shelter. You were there for a while. Yep. Then you've been able now to transition into an apartment for you and your daughter. Yes. And um, have you met someone? Um, there's somebody I have feelings for. Uh-huh. The butterflies. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I may need to meet this boy before it goes. <laughs> yeah. I might want to scrub him uh, myself. <laughs> yeah, he um, feels safe. He's safe. <laughs> I, I take it you are glad that you came to the show, glad you got the info you got. I'm glad for everything that you have done for me. Well, we, um, you know, you, you often see me offer resources to guests on the show. Uh, Marie says the counselor that we arranged for her was a huge help during her decision-making process. And th this guy is, uh, you, we're talking top, top-notch professional, Dr. Mark Hillman. He is author of My Therapist is Making Me Nuts, uh, <laughs> which is a great book that you can find on Amazon.com. I've read it. You should, too. Uh, he's joining us now on Polycom. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing with Marie. Well, thank you for the referral. And uh, the, the real task here is that Marie looked at her overall life based upon her own core values and beliefs. She made some hard yet responsible decisions. And I give that credit to Marie because she could not be addicted to high drama, the opera, and she wanted to move on to protect her daughter. I admire that. He's obviously done a, a terrific job with you, and mm -hmm. he's probably going to want to scrub this new boyfriend as well. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, uh, Mark, between you and I, we'll, we'll, we'll keep a pretty close eye on him and be sure uh, that everything is going in the right direction. And we certainly hope that you're going to continue to work with Marie oh, and, and help her great. through this time. Absolutely, Dr. Phil. So. Dr. Hillman, thank you so much for your work. <laughs> Uh, again, his, his book is My Therapist is Making Me Nuts. It is insightful, and it's on Amazon.com. You can find it there, and, and I hope you do. Uh, I am so proud of you. Thank you for Thank coming you. back and giving us an update. I, I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I recently heard from another past guest who was also unhappy in her marriage. She said her husband was constantly putting her down for packing on the pounds after their wedding. When I saw the video she sent, I almost didn't recognize her. Take a look. Hi, Dr. Phil. This is Jessica. You might remember me, but you probably don't recognize me. I was on the show because I was 60 pounds overweight, and I was very miserable with my life. When I look in the mirror, I feel like a whale. Tony makes little comments. She'll say, oh, I've only had 1,200 calories today. I'm like, did you count the entire meal? How many points was that? I don't want to do anything because I feel fat. How many times you walked away and said, I wish I'd said this, I wish I'd said that, why didn't I say this? So I let you write everything down in advance, right? Mm -hmm. It's so frustrating that you don't get that I don't feel sexy. There isn't anything you can do to say you're changing. You don't feel attractive. Read your script. I admit that I tell bad jokes and my sarcasm isn't the best medicine, but really, I mean, how many points is a half dozen donuts? Do you really get how she feels. Well, she's taken some of the things that I say jokingly to heart, and I can't have that. No, so we're going to stop that. I, I want to put 60% of your body weight on you here. Now, want to get frisky? If I told you that you could change your lifestyle and never be hungry, would you be interested in that? 150% yes. Since the show, I got divorced, and I've lost a total of 90 pounds. I've gone from a size 14 all the way down to a size zero. I have found a great guy. I'm finally empowered with self-confidence and self-esteem. I owe all this happiness to you. 
Thanks, Dr. Phil. Wow. You know, that's what I mean when I say it is a choice and you make it. So congratulations, Jessica. And she lost the weight, the old-fashioned way, eating right and exercising. So congratulations. <laughs> Coming up, a woman who says she's not afraid of her husband, but she is afraid of something else we all have to face. We'll find out what that is after the break. Hey, Dr. Phil here. Did you know that more than 16 million kids in the U.S. are at risk of hunger each day? Join me and visit feedingamerica.org hunger to find your local food bank to help. I'm Dr. Phil, and together, we are Feeding America. Closed captioning provided by... Want to get something off your chest? Sign up for the DrPhil.com community and weigh in on your favorite episodes and share your personal stories with other community members. Plus, get started on your own blog to share your thoughts on the topics that interest you most. I'll be reading those message boards. Log on to DrPhil.com today. You know, getting old is a part of life. But some people, like my next guest, Randy, downright refuse to face father time. She lies about her age, will do anything to look and feel younger. Take a look. I tell people that I'm 35 years old. My mother is the only person walking on this earth who probably knows my true age, and she better not be telling anybody. I obsess on my face and wrinkles. I use every cream I can get my hands on, good makeup, good products. Conceal and cover. As my friends get older, I see a lot more wrinkles, saggy boobs. I know it's natural, but I don't want it. They can tell they're real age, but it's just a fact that I'm going to fight it to the nail. Less is not more. Like paint on a barn. I try to dress younger. My kids, they kind of don't like it most of the time because I will raid their closets on occasion. <laughs> I'm definitely not ready to be rocking in the rocking chair, calling myself granny. My family would say this is probably an obsession. Dr. Phil, please help me get over my fear of getting old. Well, Randy is here as well as our good friend, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. Frida, so good to have you back. Thank you. Always great to be here. Always great. So, how old are you really? Dr. Phil. You know. Now, come on, that's part of <laughs> you it. You do not ask a Southern lady how old All she right. is. All right. But I'll tell you, I have been 35 for quite a few years now. All right. So <laughs> that's that's back there somewhere. It's somewhere. So look, Dr. Freed, fear of getting old just really isn't that uncommon, is it? No, it's not uncommon at all. In fact, we have some new research. Um, in which we found that 87% of Americans, 87% have a fear of getting old. We started calling that FOGO. FOGO. FOGO, right? And um, there are a number of fears, but the number one fear is physical decline. Physical decline? Physical decline. You mean health or appearance? Health, like inability. Okay, to do different to things. To do different things. Yeah. But let's start this dialogue. For example, let's talk about, let's tweet. Um, at Dr. Phil and at Get Old, um, hashtag FOGO. Let's get that dialogue started. And then um, also to start learning about aging because it's never too early to learn. People have different fears when it comes to getting older. We'll talk about more of them throughout the season. But what is your biggest fear? Uh, well, I would say just like I said, the wrinkles and like the health decline and even death. And, uh, you know, we can all age gracefully and be as beautiful as Miss Robin out there. And I, I have a feeling I may go the opposite direction, you know? It's a fear of mine. Yeah, well, but it's inevitable, though. Frida, what? Well, and, and I think one of the important things to remember, and I agree with you, Robin is beautiful. And Maybe. she's beautiful inside and out. Yes. So one of the ways that that happens is, and you know, right, that she focuses on um, healthy decisions and good lifestyle decisions that aid in, you know, good, healthy aging. And that is so important. So the inside, you know, really feeling good inside is a determinant 
for outside, so inside, physical, mental, and emotional. The better you feel that way, the better it shows outside. And that's at any age. And I really want to underscore the relationship between outside and inside, because I think it's so important. Um, lots of examples, but I want to use your example, because you seem really worried about wrinkles. Yes, I am. So wrinkles can be associated with osteoporosis. How can that happen? Right, how can that happen? Because skin and bone share a common building block, collagen. When collagen starts to break down in your skin and shows up as wrinkles, it can be a signal that it's also breaking down in your bones and shows up as osteoporosis. So yeah, work on those wrinkles on the outside, but work with your doctor to make sure that your bones are healthy on the inside. Because you said, you know, I don't want to be in a rocking chair. Those wrinkles are not likely to get you in a rocking chair, but broken bones, as a result of osteoporosis, they might. So seriously, if you've got a lot of wrinkles, then your bones may getting, be getting less dense and mm -hmm. softer. Yeah, recent research showed that deep furrows and wrinkles and um, uh, the number of wrinkles can be associated to a higher risk for osteoporosis. I bet nobody knew that. Dr. Frieda, in the audience, we have a positive role model for health and aging, right? Yes, I we mean, do. Come on. Yes, we have the positive role model, and that's my father, Harvey Lewis. He's here <laughs> with his wife, Linda. Hello, Harvey. Good to meet you, sir. I I've heard so much about you, sir. It's so good to meet you. How are you? Good to see you. Hi, how you doing? Good to see you. So, mm -hmm. how, how old can we, can we ask? Yes, you can. Well, first of all, I should say they're out here celebrating their sixth wedding anniversary. Wow. So now ask my dad how old he is. Okay, so how old are you, sir? I am 96 years old. You are 96? <laughs> Do that math. And he been got married, married six two years. days before his 90th birthday. That's oh, right. Oh, wow. Age is just a number. Well, Randy, I, I hope, I mean, come on. I, I, I hope awesome. that you see that age is just a number. Uh, and if you embrace life, I mean, you can look fantastic at any age. And I, you know, my father inspires me to so many things, aging being one of them. He really made me aspire to want to be aging like him. I, you know, I want the grace and the wisdom and the style that he has at 60 and 70 and 80 and 90. And now he's pushing me to 100. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness. So I really want to challenge you, Randy. I want to challenge you to um, not only fe face your fear of aging, your FOGO, for you, but to do it for your girls. That you have an opportunity to inspire them and to empower them to age healthily starting right now. I never thought about it that way. Oh, absolutely. So there's my role model and you can be a role model to your children and to others. And then I think we should also challenge others because you stepped up to the plate and you said, yeah, let me tell you, I have a fear of aging and here it is. <laughs> Many people haven't done that yet. I think it's important to get started now. And for, of course, for more information, people can go to getold.com for um, good tips and information on aging well. There truly is, people talk about reversing, but you can age well. I mean, and that's what getold.com is about, right? You can get tips where it's gonna happen, come on. It's, it's not going away, so do it right. I mean, if you're gonna do it, do it right. So tweet at Dr. Phil and at, at get old and go to getold.com. I want to thank all of my guests today, especially Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall. You always tell us the good thank stuff. You. For more information on today's show, you can visit drphil.com. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Yeah, this looks great. Let's get a picture of it. Okay. It's good to see you, sir. Thank you so much. Keep the seat. Keep the seat, sir. Thanks so much, guys.